Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats, uh, I don't know, fuck it, dogs, weebs, whatever the hell you people are. Good evening. Listen up, man, because I'm about to lay down the law. I'm about to open your mind. So, recently, I made a Patreon. Yeah, I know, I know, it's been done before. No, wait, that's an understatement. It's been done way too fucking much, buddy. But either way, like I said last video, I'm struggling. Somebody needs to help me turn on my damn electricity and my water. So who's it gonna be? Uh, well, right now, I have a resounding zero patrons. I got some good stuff on Patreon too, though, guys. I got an unreleased video up on there that... Uh, my patrons have only seen all zero of them. I got some rewards, like you give me a dollar, you get the, you get to be part of my Discord server. Uh, you get access to talk to me personally whenever you want. Who wouldn't want that? And you're included in the description of all my YouTube videos. Five dollars a month, you get early access to videos, etc., etc. There's rewards for all the tiers up to like 50 bucks and there's also some general goals like if we hit hundred dollars a month I'll upload a component review each month which is pretty dang cool if you ask me just little stuff like that I'm just trying to build this thing up uh, I guarantee I'll make this patreon one that's definitely gonna give back to you for pledging it's not just gonna be one of the ones you see out there that are just cash grabs the rewards are awful and you aren't getting anything out of it it's not just like I'm asking you to give me money for no reason, I'm trying to give you a little bit something back. So if we uh, if we get a patron or two by the day's end, I'll be a real happy guy. Of course, if you don't want to do that, there's other ways you can support me, like using my Amazon Associates link in the description for all your Amazon purchases. But I digress. Let's get into the video. So what are we talking about today? We're putting together a $400 gaming PC with all new parts, baby. In a time where PC part prices are just so freaking wild, it was ridiculously hard to put this thing together. All these parts are using the Amazon price, by the way. I've started doing this to make the prices of my builds more accurate because PC part picker goes by the cheapest price on the whole entire internet, the whole web. Uh, that's the price they list on each part, the cheapest one across the whole entire internet. And when it comes down to it, if someone builds this PC, they aren't going to hit up 10 different websites to order their parts. That's just asking for something to go wrong. So it's all Amazon prices from here on out, baby. Uh, associate links to these parts are in the description of the video as well, by the way, uh, as well as the general link to the whole site if you want to support the channel. We're going to start off with the CPU though. So starting off with the CPU, I have the Intel Pentium G4560, which if you are going to call yourself part of the PC building community, you should already be pretty well familiar with by now. And if not, you better learn, mate. You want to keep up, you gotta learn. It's a two core, four thread Pentium with hyper threading. So uh, it's pretty much an i3. It has integrated graphics, which are a good backup if your GPU dies and for troubleshooting purposes. But as far as gaming goes, uh, it's probably the cheapest CPU I'd ever recommend to somebody. It can handle 1080p for sure, which is the goal of this thing. But anything higher than that, uh, I'd be a little bit sketched out. I'm not saying this thing is just going to blow, but if you're trying to play some 1440p on this thing and your PC starts shaking, shit starts flying around, uh, I definitely duck and cover. Moving on for the motherboard. It's, it's, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It's just the cheapest freaking board I could find. What more do you want? I'm not gonna lie to you and try to hype this thing up. Oh, yeah, it's actually de got a decent, it's got a decent, uh, no, man, it doesn't have anything. It, it's the cheapest thing I could find. It's got all the bare minimums, two RAM slots, four SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. It only supports DDR4 up to 2133 megahertz, which for DDR4 is pretty damn slow. Uh, no overclocking. It's cheap. It has decent reviews. It just works, damn it. Qu quit asking for so much, man. It's gonna work. It's gonna fit the budget, barely. It's the Gigabyte GA H110MA Micro ATX motherboard. Next up, I got the RAM. And in case you've been living under a rock, RAM 
is real messed up these days. It's at a price it's never been before. $45 was the cheapest I could find for a 4GB stick of DDR4. This Corsair 4GB 2133MHz stick was the cheapest I could find. A few years ago, you get 8GB for that much, so that shows you just how terrible it's gone recently. It's a damn shame, man. Uh, but I don't know what to tell you. Just buy another 4 gigabyte stick once the price drops. But right now, no matter how hard you push and you squeeze, you ain't gonna fit 8 gigabytes of RAM in this budget without doing some downgrades to the GPU and CPU, which frankly, I'm not willing to do. So that's what we gotta do. Now here's where things start to get a little bit funky. For the storage, I got the Hitachi Ultra Star 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive. Now Hitachi is definitely not the preferred brand when it comes to hard drives, but they aren't the worst. I've ran two Hitachi hard drives in my life and neither have failed to this day, so I don't really mind them too much, I don't have anything against them, I think it ought to hold up for you. Uh, but for $34 you're getting 1TB of storage, which is literally impossible to beat on Amazon. Don't even try and beat it. It's the cheapest there is, buddy, so hands off that search bar. So, yeah, I'd trust this hard drive if I were you, so I'm just going to put her in the build as a little cost-cutting measure. Next up, the main attraction, the GPU. I went with the MSI GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. This black beauty comes with what you'd expect from any other 1050 Ti. You're getting 4 gigabytes of GDDR5, you're getting a decent cooler, and you're getting plenty of 1080p gaming power. This guy doesn't even need external power from a power supply, that's just how power efficient it is. It's great for overclocking too, the thermals on it are very manageable. I love the look of the design on this thing too, and of right now it's the cheapest 1050 Ti you can get on Amazon, so it's a great fit for this build in particular. Gotta cheap out on everything you can. Next up, it's everyone's favorite PC part, the case! I don't know why it is, but every time I make one of my stupid edits, it's almost always when I'm talking about the case. I don't know what it is, man. I'm not going to question it. Uh, uh, For the case, I, I have the Zion Zon. What's up with that name? Zion Zon. Come on, man. 350 ATX mid tower case. It's the cheapest mid tower case on Amazon at a price of only $25, which for a mid tower case, that's just crazy, ladies and gentlemen. That's real cheap. So I figured, why not? Uh, there's no deep backstory, guys. That's it. Um, it's a decent looking case. It has okay reviews. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. The last part of this build is the power supply. Nothing exciting here, just a regular old $30 power supply. EVGA has always been known for making some reliable stuff, and this PSU is no exception. It's cheap, and it's going to get the job done. So tally up everything, and you're looking at about 419 buckaroos. It's $19 over the 400 I promised. I know. I know. It's not the price I promised, and you're probably pissed. Understandable. <laughs> well, how about you quit futzing around, wasting your lives, and save up the uh, extra $19, kid? Uh, I'm just kidding, buddy. If you want to build it, please use the links in the description or the general link to Amazon in the description to support my channel. You can also use the links to buy anything on Amazon. Snakes, snails, or puppy dog tails. You know the drill. I've said it once and I'll say it a thousand times more. A uh, $400 gaming PC though. How about that? It's still possible. If you guys put this together, I guarantee you'll have a good gaming experience. The 4GB of RAM though might be pushing it a little bit, and some might argue that you should go with a standard GTX 1050 instead of the 1050i, and you'd be able to afford another 4GB of RAM and have that solid 8GB number which people typically shoot for. Uh, that build would definitely be more balanced, but when it comes to raw FPS, I think this guy I put together right here is the cream de la creme, cream of the crop deal right here. I'd like to hear your thoughts though, that's right buddy, you! Sound off in the comments on what improvements you'd like to see in this build. Let me know if I'm doing a good job. Please give this video a like while you're at it because, hmm, oh, just because I asked nicely guys, I, I said please. How many other YouTubers are out here saying their pleases? and their thank yous, other than your boy slash 687, not too many. I've recently been promoting my merchandise too, so in case you aren't aware, I have some sick merch. You should check it out in the description. 
It's a uh, Teespring shop, so every about four days I ship out and order a t-shirt. Uh, they're PC related t-shirts that I actually wear regularly, uh, like a t-shirt with a CPU frying an egg on it. Just picture that, man. Why wouldn't you want to wear that? Uh, so check that out if you'd like. I'd say that damn near wraps everything up. So I hope you all had a great day. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you all have a great evening. So see y'all later. Be sure to subscribe if you're new. Peace.